I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube, and this is part two of our cross stitch organization and storage series. In part one, I gave you a tour of my home studio and how I organize all of my cross stitch supplies at home, and you can check that out here. Today, I'm going to show you how we organize at Fat Quarter Shop since it is very different. I'm also going to give you organization tips from Lori Holt, Priscilla Blaine, Jan Hicks, and other cross stitchers. So join me today and hopefully we have great tips for you to implement at your home. I'm going to start the video showing how we store at Fat Quarter Shop and in these white cabinets that we got from Hobby Lobby, we're able to have the entire set of lots of different manufacturers threads. So in here we have DMC, Aura Floss, Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, General Arts, Color and Cotton, and NPI. So all of that is in here and I'm going to show you how we organized it really nice and how we got it all to fit. When we got these drawers, I wanted everything to be really efficient and everything to be able to fit really nice. So I found these drawers that fit perfectly and we have four of the shorter drawers this way and we've labeled them 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, and then in the back, I've got a longer one and it's 1E. So all of the drawers are labeled just like this and then we have a big spreadsheet that tells us exactly everything that's in these bins and that's how we're able to get so much in here when we worked with dmc we took the dmc color card and we organized by color using the color card so that we had a place to start so that's drawer one and dmc has three drawers i'm going to show you all three so this is drawer two and so if we ever need to know where color 472 is, if we look in our spreadsheet, it's going to be on, it's going to have a note that it's in 2A. So when we go to get something and we borrow from here, we know exactly where to put it back. And it just makes it super easy when we're trying to kit something or pick colors for something that we're going to kit up or make for ourselves. We decided to sort all of our colors by colorway because when we needed a navy, we wanna have one bin to go to, or if we need a green, we want to go one place instead of getting all three drawers out. And then what we do is we, when we're trying to pick, we pull these out to the side, pick, and then put them back. And this is really portable and easy to take these in and out, and they were super inexpensive. And this is our third drawer of DMC. We have all of Weeks Dye Works in two different bins, and we also did the same thing with color weight, but this one we just did it more by eye since there isn't a color card, and we just kind of went with the primary colors just like we did DMC. So if we need a basil Weeks Dye Works, we'll know it's in 4C. So that's the first Weeks Dye Works, and this is the second Weeks Dye Works. And the one we go to most for Weeks Dye Works is always this one for all of our background colors. Now we'll move to Classic Color Works. We also have Classic Color Works in two different drawers. So you can see we kind of did the same exact thing with sorting everything by color. And this is our second drawer of Classic Color Works. So you can see we've got all the same colorways going. We've got our backgrounds over here, our browns in the back, and there are two drawers of that. Our next two drawers are Aura Floss. And I was amazed that these fit Aura Floss perfectly. And I've done the same thing where we've got all the colors together. And if we go to our spreadsheet, we know exactly what is in 8C. So that's our floss. The next two drawers at the bottom are basically a lot taller drawers. So in this one, we have put our floss and we have room to add if we need to add later. So our floss only fit in two. Our bottom one we left empty and we just have extra containers if we need to use them for something or if we're gonna add another manufacturer later. So that is our first set of drawers. And again, it holds DMC, Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, and Aura Floss. Let's move to our second container. 
Our top drawer of our second cabinet has all of our NPI silks. These are so lovely to stitch with. So I love working with these. They have really beautiful colors. And again, we continued the number. So now we're on drawer 11. And this is our second drawer of NPI. And NPI has a really beautiful range of colors. And this is our third drawer of NPI. And to label these, I just use a simple P-Touch label maker by Brother, and we put a link to it in the description box, as well as a link to these acrylic containers. On Gentle Arts, some of the tops are cream and some are brown. They consider some of them simply shaker colors and some of them sampler thread colors. We consider them all the same and stitch with them just the same. Our second drawer of Gentle Arts is here. And the same thing, we're on drawer 15. Our last two drawers are color and cotton. And you will see that these are filled higher. And the reason they're filled higher is these include eight yards on a skein versus five yards on a skein that Classic Color Works, Weeks Dye Works, and Gentle Arts have. And this is our last drawer of color and cotton. So I'm gonna show you the remaining drawers that gives us lots of room to grow and add as more companies come around. So our bottom two drawers are both empty. So here's one. And here's the other. And again, we've got all these little acrylic containers and we keep the DMC color card in one of them so that we can always look for colors if we need to. Another item we store floss in at Back Corbett Shop is our floss and store. We built this so that everyone would have a way to store really nicely all of your floss bitties. So you can use your floss bitties with any floss and this fits them perfectly and it also happens to fit our floss. There are nine compartments in each and there's dots on the bottom of the container so you can stack as many as you want. For all of my cross stitch fabric, I have a little side desk in my office that I keep all of my fabric in and I'm in the Witchell Club and the Fabric Flare Club at Back Quarter Shop. So I leave those in here and I also have all of Lori Holt's fabrics in here as well. And just different colors that I like that we might use for kits in the future. So I just keep all of my fabric in one drawer I also store fabric at Fat Quarter Shop in these brand new stitch card boxes and I keep all of Lori's fabrics in the teal box and I keep a needle minder right on the top of it and it's just another way to store fabric. In the drawer next to the other drawer I keep project bags so I've got all different sizes, different types, I've got fabric bags, I've got mesh bags. So I keep all of my bags in another drawer. I don't really keep cross stitch patterns at work because if I get a pattern, I only buy it if I'm gonna actually make it. So at that point, it would go in my stitch bag and it would go in my whip box that I have shown in my other video. But I do keep on hand all of Lori Holt stitch cards and they go in this wonderful stitch card box and I keep them in the red color. These boxes come in denim, teal, and red, and I do keep all of her stitch cards easily available for myself at work. Now that I've shown you how I store all of my stuff at Fat Quarter Shop, I'm gonna show you some other stitchers and how they store. Cheryl stores all of her DMC. She has a double-sided tackle box and it's basically that side and the exact same thing on the other side and she has her full set of DMC in this case and I'm going to open it up and show you the inside. Cheryl keeps all of her DMC on plastic bobbins and she's never had issues with knotting or kinks and she keeps a full set in this tackle box. All of her bobbins are stored in numerical order. Cheryl keeps all of her DMC backstock in this vintage sewing machine case. Within this, she keeps them in numerical order within Ziploc bags. 
For fancy floss, Cheryl does two different methods for storing her threads. For classic color works, weed style works, and general arts, she keeps them in these shoebox size plastic boxes and they're all alphabetical. The reason she keeps classic color works, general arts, and weak style works alphabetically is most patterns call for these three brands. So that's how she has these. For all of Cheryl's other threads, she keeps them in these snapware containers and she keeps them just by color. So she's got a mix of different manufacturers within each of these. So that is all of Cheryl's threads. Cheryl has lots and lots and lots of fabric. So she's got 12 of these bins. She keeps them labeled by count, and then within each, she keeps it by type. So she's got a ton of fabric, so she can just go shopping for what she needs at her house. Cheryl also has a ton of patterns. She's been collecting for 30 plus years, and she keeps all of her larger patterns in these magazine racks, and she keeps them by designer. So this is Prairie Schooler and she also has Blackbird, et cetera, et cetera. For her smaller patterns, she keeps them also by designer within these small little pattern boxes. They can be new or vintage. Within each designer's magazine rack, she does divide them out by style. So she has all of her Prairie Schooler Santas in one bag together, and she has all of her Halloween together and then the other ones that are just general just stay in here loose. Now for Cheryl's notions, she has lots of antique sewing machine drawers that she gets at different antique stores and in them she keeps all of her different hoops, her ribbons, rickrack, anything like that. And she has lots of fancy scissors and she keeps them in these flower frogs and she also finds these at antique stores. So she's got Lots and lots of notions also. Now I'm gonna move to where I show you my favorite designers and how they organize their sewing studio. When you walk into Lori Holt's sewing studio, this is what you will see on the wall. She has this beautiful shelf that she has put some of her cross stitch pieces on. And below that shelf, she has the same exact drawer set that I have that I showed in video one because she bought it first and I copied her. And within this, she has all of her fancy floss in the first and second drawers. She keeps all of them by color. And she keeps all of them within the same drawer. So she has all of classic weeks, general arts, all in that same brown drawer. And then all of those brands within the pink drawer, even her silk. So she keeps everything all by color in the first six drawers. And then below that, she keeps a full set of DMC and she has all of those by color within plastic bags so that she can fit all of that nicely within there. And in her bottom drawers, she has just some excess stuff. So she's got some of her RF floss boxes, some of her project bags in there. And then when you walk in her sewing studio to the left, you're going to see her TV on the left and on the right, all six of those drawers are full of patterns. So I'm gonna give you a look within each of the pattern drawers. She has magazine holders just like Cheryl does, and she also keeps them by designer. For her fabric, they're within these red cabinets, and she keeps all of her fabric by count. For more information on how Lori Holt's studio looks and how she stores everything, visit her YouTube channel and watch Floss Tube number eight, and she's gonna show you her entire room. Now we're gonna move to designers Priscilla and Chelsea, the designers behind Stitching with the Housewives. They also have a Floss Tube channel, so check it out. And I'm gonna show you how Priscilla stores all of her fabric and all of her floss. So Priscilla and Chelsea exclusively stitch with classic color works and every now and then they'll throw in a DMC skein. So all of Priscilla's floss are in these two containers. So she just buys the colors that she uses and she just uses those colors. So she is very much a minimalist with her thread. Priscilla and Chelsea stitch primarily on 28 count Monaco. If they stitch on anything else, they do stay within 28 count and they hand dye all of their fabric and they have a video and you can check out their video on how they dye their fabric 
and this is all of Priscilla's fabrics. So she is a little bit like me where she tries to buy just what she's gonna use. Our next designer that I'm gonna feature today is Jan Hicks. And Jan lives in an RV, so she has to keep everything nice and tidy. And whatever her excess is, she does keep in a storage container. And she also has a floss tube channel that you'll want to check out. Jan Hicks primarily uses Eagle Creek Packet to organize her DMC floss. Within that, she uses Thread Tucks by Yarn Tree for the little plastic bags, and she puts her DMC floss in it, and then she puts those little plastic bags within the Eagle Creek Packet organizers. Now, she has more than one skein. She does put two in a bag, which is why she likes these bags. When she's stitching, she's gonna pull out just the floss that she thinks she needs for that project, and then put all the floss back in her Eagle Creek packets. So that's how Jan stores all of her DMC, and hopefully she's gonna show us on her channel how she stores all of her silk threads. I have a couple of ideas to also show you. The Bisley cabinets are available at the container store and they come in a wide variety of colors so you can really brighten up your sewing room. And within it, you can store little plastic bobbins or cardboard bobbins with your DMC or any of your colors. And within this, they sell inserts that you would put inside. This drawer has the four section insert, and then this one has the nine section insert. So there's different inserts you can buy. And any small patterns will also fit here nicely. And you can also fit needle minders and other notions. So this is a great notion idea and it's a great way if you're just starting out and you have a small stash this is a great way to start thank you for watching the fat quarter shop floss tube cross stitch organization and storage video comment below and let us know what your favorite part of the video is and what you think you can do at your house